Hey guys, Scott Fishman here with a great guest today heading into MLW Fightland that's coming up at Center Stage in Atlanta. Um, he just debuted for MLW not that long ago. Uh, Brock Anderson, how are you today? Good, Scott. How are you? Good, good. Thanks good. for the time. So I'm um, excited about uh, you working for MLW, of course, continuing your your pro wrestling career. Um, you had that match at Never Say Never um, alongside C.W. Anderson, which is so, so fun that you guys have a tag team. Uh, talk about first just coming to MLW and forming a tag team with C.W. and kind of how that came together. It's really cool that you have someone with so much experience and is at a different point in his career than you're at. Um, but you guys have come together and it's kind of like this old school feel to it. Yes, sir. So it's it wasn't our first time tagging together the last show. So it took a little bit of a while after I left AEW. Um, didn't really know where my path was going to be. So the guy who trained me, Lodi, from uh, the flock in WCW, he actually was trained was by CW. So CW had come around and come to a couple of our practices, and I'd rolled around with him a little bit. And uh, I think we had, I can't remember the timing, but we had done a six-man with me, C-Dub, and his partner at the time. So about September, I'm gone from AEW, company that I'd worked for a couple times here in the Carolinas, AML, uh, Tracy Myers and Brian Hawks. They floated the idea of me and C-Dub uh, tagging together and my God's honest truth. First initial reaction, I was like, it makes too much sense. Yes, please sign me up. Mm -hmm. So me and him been tagging together in AML with the old man as the manager. We are currently the tag team champions. And then about halfway through that process, MLW reached out and said basically the same thing that I said initially. They said, this makes too much sense. We want y'all to come in. And so far, so good. What's uh what's been your first impression? I th what I love about MLW is it does combine a lot of the tradition of the past, the old school. We'll see a lot of veterans showing up, but also a lot of emerging talent have come from MLW, and it's been a great platform for that. So, what was kind of you know you working for AEW and all the independence that you have compared to MLW? Kind of how do you compare the experience? So I knew a couple guys that had started there before. And then went to AEW after. So I talked to, you know, Brian, who I partnered with, Brian Pillman Jr., Lexus King, I guess he's going by now. <laughs> uh, talked to him a little bit about it. He loved his experience. Uh, Max obviously came from there. So I know all that. And then a couple guys, you know, I met Fatu a couple times. A couple guys that have come through and managed to turn it around for themselves, parlay that experience into something pretty good for themselves. Yeah, for sure um cool venue uh historic venue that you're going to be working on the center stage your history of your dad uh with wcw nwa and you know synonymous at center stage many a times i'm sure you know i'm just curious like growing up do you have any old memories that you can share uh being at center stage with your dad wrestling and things like that do you do you have any kind of because it's such a cool moment to have you working in that venue that your dad did it is a very cool moment. And no, Scott, I don't have any memories because I only look 40. I'm actually 27. <laughs> so I was born in 97. So by the time. Oh, man, I forgot. Yeah, it's bad. Bad math. The math wasn't math. And sorry about that. But it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I get it a lot. Yeah. He was doing those WCW tapings. What? 93 yeah, ish, 90, 95. 90, 90, but um, what does it mean to you, though, to, to, to share the same venue that he did? That's got to have been real cool. It is very cool. It's one off the bucket list. You can throw it in the list of, you know, when I got to wrestling Greensboro, that was one that, you know, that's a bucket list one. You get to do, go around all these old buildings. I remember like the, uh, we did the Nashville, not the fairgrounds, but the municipal auditorium where Goulas and uh, the Jarrett's ran for years. So you get to hit Charlotte Coliseum, hitting some of those old buildings that, you know, had wrestling 50 years ago was always cool. So center stage is, it's a little different because it was TV tapings, but it's still, it's going to be unique. I don't know anything about it. I just know the setup they had for WCW Saturday night. So it'll be interesting to get in there and see what it, what it looks like. Um, 
you know, obviously what happened with, with AEW, um, what, was there a point where you kind of wanted to to step away? Like, is this really worth it for me to keep going? Or did your dad kind of give you any kind of advice to, to keep going? Cause you know, he's been, he had his ebbs and flows and his, his roller coaster within wrestling too. So how much did you take from his experience too? And you're kind of thinking about what your next move was going to be. Uh, AEW is great. I have nothing but great things to say about people that work there. Tony was great to the whole industry when nobody else was working. You know, he kept people working during a trying time, not only in the business, but around the world. So I appreciate that experience. I just didn't think I could get better there because I don't know if they had a plan for me or, I mean, there just wasn't enough reps. It came down to just getting reps. So they reached out, they, they sent something, the similar deal I was on. And I just said, you know, I think I'm going to take my chances. So I, when I guarantee, when I go out, when I travel, I know I'm going to wrestle and get better. So that was kind of my approach during the whole thing. And, I I've, that, and yeah. I've been doing that every time I leave the house, I know I'm going to have a match. So clearly that pat. So that was kind of your just like that passion was there. You wanted to bet on yourself and kind of get that experience that you needed. You're right. Cause when you, when you uh, don't have those reps, uh, you know, you're not getting ex- better. And then also you have the chance now to work with a variety of talent, variety of styles, different promotions, different feels. Um, is that kind of what you're kind of gauging right now as you kind of uh, are building your career and, and evolving? I think I fell into a perfect scenario. Um, now I'm tagging with a guy who's been in the business 30 years and he kissed it and C-Dub can tell me the things that my old man can't because you can either be a father or you can be, you know, a coach. So sometimes he tips around some areas. I usually know when there's something that he wants to say. And I, I mean, just that father son bond, I can sense it, but C-Dub's the one that can tell me like, Hey, no, this sucked. That was good. Or do this, do that. So that experience that I'm just acquiring through osmosis, just his knowledge and everything is, I'm really glad that it panned out the way it did. And I, I always rib him. I'm saying, I'm like, you understand, like you're the only in this situation. You've turned into Ole Anderson. <laughs> what does he think about that? Do you get a kick out of that? or he's like, I think he's kind of embracing it, to be honest with you. That's awesome. It's interesting because it's like a very scenario you could take this to apply to anything because when someone's learning like on a football field or even learning how to swim or something like that, you know, it's different when it's coming from your dad and then coming from someone else. It's just, you know, it's just a different thing. And maybe the delivery of it or just, you know, the tone of your dad, because, you know, your dad's tone is like, no, dad, I don't want to take that information. And But then coming from someone else, the same information, he's like, OK, yeah, I get it because it's coming from yeah. you. Because he's yeah, he's dad. So sometimes I'll just be like, I know or like, no, and just. <laughs> just, it's hard to gauge unless you live it yeah for sure uh growing up what what at what point did you realize your dad was your dad was it a, what was that moment like for you growing up uh that you was like okay my dad is actually like a name that people know and, and is famous so when i was growing up he was he retired when i was six months old so never saw any in-ring stuff really so my dad would just worked for a wrestling company he worked for wwe and I was like, that's pretty sweet. Like, that's a unique job. Granted, he was on the road a lot, but it was cool. Sometimes, you know, we'd get to go to the matches if they were close by, or we'd get to go to Mania every year. They treated it like a family vacation. So it was just my dad had a cool job. And we had, uh, I'd say probably about like six, seven, eight. We had the old VHS tapes. Pre, pre DVDs, pre. I mean, DVDs were around, but we didn't have them on DVDs. But pre, uh, network is what I was looking for. Network streaming apps, all that YouTube. So I would just pop in these grainy VHS tapes, and there's your dad, twenty years younger, wrestling, and it was kind of a trip. And I just started watching more and more of those, and I started to realize I was like, "Oh shit!" And he, oh sorry, uh, I was like, "Oh dang, he he might have been, uh, he was pretty good at this." So I'd say around then, and it just was a slow, probably. And then I saw how the boys in the back treated him, 
And it was just kind of like things started to click. I was like, okay, he might know what he's talking about. He might be all right at this. Yeah. And, but it's, it's just, uh, I just love the fact that you're not resting on your laurels. You're like, okay, I'm the, you know, the son of Arn Anderson. You're, you're like, I want to pave my own way, but that's such a hard thing to do. Uh, you know, when you have someone with such respect and let being a legend and things like that, just talk about how you're managing that and that, how that kind of played into the decision to want to be a wrestler, to step in the same business as he, um, and kind of work your way through that. I mean, just from where you started to where you are now, kind of how did that mindset evolve or change or has it since? Um, so I told this before it's, I grew up around it. So it was, there was never a point that I wasn't around it or my dad didn't work for a wrestling company. I mean, we always, when it was, when we were growing up around the dinner table, it was, if he was home, whether he wasn't home, wrestling would be on if it was on that night if it was monday raw was on if it was tuesday or thursday or friday depending on the era smackdown was on if it was wednesday or thursday impact was on depending <laughs> on where. i mean it would just be on and then we the pay-per-views we'd get so it was just on and we'd it'd be it'd be like football for some families like even if we weren't watching every minute like focusing in on it it was background noise at least it was on because it was just ingrained on our family so much so i mean it was just normal to me it's like growing up in like an auto body shop i equate it to it's like you're just around it and then at a certain point you're like i think i could do this but the moment so that was a long-winded version basically when you're five six seven eight years old you want to be anything and everything it changes on a weekly basis you want to be a firefighter you want to be a police officer you want to be a football player baseball player hockey player it changes all the time because your mind's i mean you're five or six the moment actually i figured out this is what i want to do was um it was in houston at the houston texans football stadium it was wrestlemania 25 it was wrestlemania weekend which i said that they WWE would always allow the employees to have their family. It was a nice little like vacation treat for the year. So we're up there, we're in the box. And uh, it was when these, the cards started getting about seven hours, like six <laughs> seven hours. And they had a lot of pre-show and a lot of that. And it was, it was long in the night and I was, I was already tired. And then all of a sudden you see this smoke come, all this white light, and a guy ascends or descends from the ceiling, and he's got all the white white robe on, the white hat, everything, can't see his face. He hits the ground, and then when he hits the ground, HBK's music hits. And he was wrestling The Undertaker. It was HBK Taker 1, and I watched that whole match. It was like 40 minutes, and it was just two legends going at it, and the way they had that crowd in the palm of their hands with everything they did, no wasted movement. I was like, that's when it clicked. I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. Wow. Yeah. That's definitely a match to one of the greatest matches of all time, let alone at WrestleMania. So that I could see how that may inspire you uh, to do that. I mean, did you, before you decided to pursue it, did you talk to others who are in the same shoes, like a Charlotte flair or a Cody Rhodes or Dustin Rhodes and kind of, see what you're kind of going to get ready for or was it kind of just stepping in right from there not really uh charlotte ashley uh, i've known my whole life she was like a big sister but she initially and she said this she initially i don't think was like gung-ho on being in the business but she did it purely out of fulfilling reed's ambitions and i think she's exceeded and way exceeded uh those expectations so no I, I didn't have that conversation with her because she was personal training she didn't want to do any of that yeah because well, uh, it's interesting because she at wrestlemania became inspired by being at wrestlemania at, at yeah. some and so very similar journey in that sense in that way no never had any of those conversations i did have a conversation with my dad when i was about 17 i mean i was wrestling in high school amateur and uh you know, graduation's coming up. 
and I was fully entrenched in it. I was like, this is like, I knew what I wanted to do. And I was like, I was like, dad, there's no point in me going to college. Like, this is what I want to do. You know, I don't know. I'd go to Japan, something, start training, whatever. And he wasn't, it wasn't a flat no, but it was a pretty, he was like, well, ask your mom. And mom was flat no. She was like, go to college. Yeah, you're the bad guy. Yeah, she was like, go to college, get an education, have a backup plan because this is not a sure thing. So I was like, okay. Went to ECU four and a half years, graduated December 19, and then January 2020 started training. So it was immediate. Like the second I got that piece of paper, I was like, let's let's start it. Let's go. What if you didn't do wrestling? What would what would your what what's your other op? I mean, you went to you got your degree. So what's what's the other interest? You know, they um, always talk about having a fallback plan. Do you have what's that would be? Hopefully, I never have to find that out. I guess I'll have to come up with something quick if it comes. Oh, wow. to that. Okay. <laughs> so it's all everything's in this basket. So that's a lot of pressure that you're putting on yourself there. So at what point were you gauge your success that this is really working? And at what point will you be like, okay, maybe it's time I think of something else? I'll, I met, I have. I have an idea in my head of where I want to be by a certain age. And if I'm not there, then, then we'll explore other options. But yeah, I have an idea in my head. What is your end goal? Do you want to be in a WWE ring or what, what's kind of, what would be success for you? I want to be where's best for me personally, professionally, all that. It doesn't have to be. I don't have to pigeonhole it to one company. Just wherever I feel is best for me. Okay. Um, with you going to MLW with CW, are we possibly, could we see an Arn Anderson showing up? Or is that out of the realm of possibility? What do you want to tell fans when it comes to that sort of thing? He might show up. And he's liable to show up at any time. He hadn't told me anything, you know. But always keep it in the back of your head that he might wander into the building somehow and sneak down and deliver might... a spine buster. Yeah. There's always <laughs> that, there's always that possibility. We always got that card up our sleeve. Do you guys have a tradition place? I mean, everyone kind of kids when he has his little map thing, that's like a waffle house menu or something like that. Do you guys have a go-to spot that you like to go to? Um, together? I mean, we love waffle house. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. Waffle House is, especially in this business, open 24 hours. Hard to beat Waffle House. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's just a couple restaurants around Charlotte that we've been going to for years that are still here. You know, Japanese Steakhouse, our steakhouses. We like to eat some steak. We, <laughs> we're a big red meat family. And is it just wrestling you guys talk? I feel like, is there any other thing? Is there a show that you watch or or oh, what, other oh. what are the other topics of conversation? Oh, well, I mean, it's just, it's a normal, it's, it's not rest. It's okay. We talk about wrestling more than the average American family. Yes. It's probably, <laughs> I'm sure your mom's like, okay, sh there's probably a point where you guys, okay, guys, you need to, let's cut it off here. <laughs> yeah. My mom, my mom's a saint. I don't know how she can deal with being in the business, being around the business and being the married to a wrestler for 40 years, 40 years next year. And, wow. uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, it's a normal relationship. I'm going over later to watch this Jets San Francisco 49ers game. I mean, nice. we, we love watching football. We love Braves baseball. Uh, they needed to get it together because <laughs> we could be a lot better than we are. I know we got injuries. Yeah, we love Braves baseball. Uh, if he's not on the road, he's probably watching a Braves game. Every, he'll watch, he's a psychopath. He'll watch 162 regular season games if he can. Uh, I've turned him on to some shows. I think he's turned into a big TV show guy, especially with more free time on his hands. You know, I, I had to turn him on to Ozark, Yellowstone, Peaky Blinders, all these all these really good shows he gets into. And they're not all hits with him. Sometimes he doesn't like them. Uh, <laughs> it probably takes a couple episodes, some of them to get into. And he's probably like, no, I don't have that patience. <laughs> well, especially coming from wrestling. He really gets mad when he puts time into something and the finish to that thing is not up to snuff. He really, it really grinds his gears. Yeah. I like, I can imagine watching game of Thrones and being really frustrated at how that one ended, but <laughs> I just watched that for the first time. Uh, and I, 
and I knew people, I knew from, I never watched it originally, but I knew people that watched it and they told me in present time, like what, 10 years ago or, or five years ago, whenever it was, they're like, the finish was terrible. So I, I knew that going in. I had no idea how bad it was though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, You know, when it seems like a group might be, there might be a little faction thing going on in MLW right now. I'm just curious though, for you, if you kind of had your own horsemen with yourself, who would be the three others you would recruit right now from the wrestling business? Hmm. You had your own pick. That's a good question. <laughs> I wouldn't even, you know, I wouldn't even put myself in it because it'd be ridiculous. But we'll go FTR as the tag team. Okay. We'll go Cody as the champ. We'll go Randy as the grizzled vet. Okay. And so you gotta have you gotta have a manager in there. JJ Dillon. You gotta have I I guess you'd have to put I guess you'd have to Paul have to put Paul E in there. Paul Paul Heyman. Oh wow. Okay. So dangerous alliance mixed with four horsemen. I like it. I like the way you're thinking there. <laughs> I think that'd be a pretty solid group. Yeah, for sure. Uh when it comes to your dad's legacy, what do you think that would be within pro wrestling? I think you know, it was really unfortunate that his career ended the way it did, but in a lot of ways, it was a blessing on the family's end because you got to see, you know, him more regularly than you would normally if he was on the road all the time. He got to see you grow up and the fam be with the family and things like that. But when you and then thinking about what he did past that with it, like you said, with WWE, the behind the scenes stuff and, and you know, the creative mind putting matches together and being so influential when it comes to a lot of the young careers. Um, but when what do you think it is when when you think of your dad's legacy? I think his career, I think he's been around, I think in the last 10 years, it's really started to to grow his legacy. Because when I was growing up in Charlotte, everybody, I mean, people would come up to him all the time. Sometimes they just knew he was an Anderson. Sometimes they'd be like, are you Ole Anderson? Are you Gene Anderson? And he'd be like, you're close. And then it, that would really puzzle him. They would have no idea what he's talking about. But that was, I was like, yeah, he wrestled here. So I knew that. But I think his, especially his last run with AEW as Cody's manager has brought him to a whole nother generation. I think he's aged like a, like a fine wine. Like I think people have come around to be like, if this guy has been in the business, let's see, 42 consecutive years, give or take like a wow. couple a couple months between WCW and WWE, you know, whatever that four months or whatever it was. And then uh, like maybe four more months between WWE and AEW. So eight months off in 42 years, obviously they'll be like, I think the respect comes with that. For sure. Um, lastly, let's talk about the match you're going to have at fight land on September 14th on YouTube um, from center stage, it's the Andersons versus the Beaumet Fight Club. Um, what's kind of your mindset going? What 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 do you want to say about that match and your future with MLW? So, I mean, this is only my second second match in MLW. Don't know a whole lot about Beaumet, but I know there are a couple tough hombres. I know one of them's a former heavyweight champ. So I know I know we got our work cut out for us. But I mean, me and C Dub, we don't fight fair. It's never been our policy. So, I mean, we're going to bring our A game because Atlanta, I think that's been an Anderson town since, what, the Ford administration? I don't I don't think, <laughs> I think we're going to show up and show out in Atlanta. Uh, amazing. And then you think about all the reasons still to come. You got some other great uh, towns coming. Hopefully you'll be part of that with, with a, a Florida date. Um, I love the venue in St. Pete that they've been running. So it'd be cool to see an Anderson uh, yourself there as well. So um, for those that are interested in following, you want to let people know where they can keep up with you um, and just anything else that you want to share that's going on. Yeah, the, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, let me see, I think it's Brock Anderson with three N's at the end. And I, I still have my old one. There's apparently there's like a hundred real Brock Andersons out there and they've taken up all the usernames on Instagram. So I'm still Brock Anderson, AEW all lowercase at Instagram. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for the time. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys put together, you and CW. Uh, and then going from there, good luck with everything. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, Scott. All right.